Well, we are joined this morning by Lisa Gibbons. Lisa, thank you so much for joining us. I'm so happy to. Thank you. As a caregiver, how can you find a balance between caring for a loved one and taking care of yourself and your own family? It's one of the most overwhelming tasks that ever face us because for most caregivers, they are really in the middle. They're being pulled over here by the, the children that they gave birth to and they're being pulled on this side by the ones that gave birth to them, wanting to do the best for everyone. So I think that one of the first things to keep in mind is how important it is to take your oxygen first. Because if you really fill yourself up, mind, body, soul, spirit, then you will be mentally sound and physically sound and much better able to provide that care and get better outcomes for the care receiver. I also think taking advantage of the help and support that's out there, especially on the digital side, the technology side, is so crucial. We know that two thirds of caregivers want to use technology to help care for their loved one, but only about 7% of us are. So that's a huge growth opportunity for support. So for me, with my dad, he lives alone and independently. He's 87 years old. Um, he's very fit, but I know the risk of falls. I know that I worry. So I talked my dad into getting a medical alert device. Now, he was resistant at first because to him, that meant he was vulnerable, right? I said, Daddy, do this for me. It makes me feel better. I live 3,000 miles away. I won't worry. And I knew that that was his sweet spot. So sure enough, uh, we got him a Philips Lifeline. And a couple of years after that, m the, the worst happened. My dad had a heart attack. Had he not had his Lifeline, help would not have arrived on time, and we would have lost him. So for me, knowing that help is a button push away 24 seven, no matter where he goes in the entire United States, I know that I can worry less about my dad and know that he's aging well. Now you spoke about the, the distance between you physically. So how do you deal with the guilt if you live far away or if you feel like you're not able to give your loved ones enough time? Oh, I think guilt is that constant companion of the caregiver. You know, uh, whether you're the on-site provider or you are the long-distance caregiver, oftentimes we, we beat ourselves up about what we could have done, what we should have done. Sometimes I think there's constructive guilt. The good guilt, I'll call it, is when you, say, lose your patience with mom or dad. And that's a signal that you need more rest, you need more strategies, you need to learn more coping skills. So that's a good kind of guilt. I'll tell you what's a trap though, what I call the bad guilt, or things that you really can't do anything about, where you say, I ought to be able to handle this, I'm his daughter. I should have done better. Those kinds of things really don't serve anybody. You know, it's, if you're showing up every day with your love and your best intention, and you're learning all you can along the way, and keeping yourself strong, that's all you can do. So beyond that, you have to be very flexible, very forgiving, let it go. Now, do you have any tips on how to keep the family together as your parent or family member is getting older? You know, I'm the middle of three kids. I have a big brother and a little sister. And when my mom had Alzheimer's disease, we had family check-ins. So that was a chance for everybody's voice to be heard. My dad, my sister-in-law, all of us on the team could come together and get updates about how we felt, what we were doing. I think it's really important to keep in mind that not everyone on your team and your family can offer the same thing. We have different limits, but it is important for everyone to feel they're providing something. So maybe someone calls mom's friends and keeps them up to date. Maybe somebody keeps the scrapbook. Another person does the researcher handles the legal side of things, and someone else is the on-site provider. As long as everybody feels that they are contributing and doesn't feel shamed about what they're unable to contribute, then you're gonna be much more successful. And are there any ways to help alleviate the worry of your parent or relative's well-being when you're far away? 
I think that making sure you're educated, that you know all you can, making sure you reach out for help because that's something that's counterintuitive for a lot of caregivers. I don't know where we got this notion that you get a gold star for doing it by yourself, but that's a really uh, defeating place to come from because it's a path you can't walk alone. And I think looking at what can I do, who can I get on my team, and what can I bring to the scenario. When we got a Phillips Lifeline, we were able to know that if dad was out fishing on the lake by himself and say he passed out and hit his head, the lifeline would automatically call for help and the GPS technology would be able to find him on the lake. So that allows daddy to live independently. Now he also has a Phillips medical dispenser, medication dispenser, to help him stay on track with his regime with all his medications. You know, most seniors take more than one medication and managing those is crucial to their, to their health. So the medication device, the dispenser helps you stay on track so again, you can live independently. When I tell you that wearing a Philips Lifeline is discreet, let me show you what I mean. I have one on, this is mine. This is how small it is. We're talking about this small pendant, a push of this button. You can wear it under your shirt, under your blouse, just as easily as I did. No one ever has to know, has to know that you have it on. And that little button can automatically detect a fall so that even if you're passed out, if you're unconscious, if you're disoriented, it will call for help for you whether you can or not. I think that's probably the biggest step forward towards helping caregivers keep it all together. Now, where can we go for more information? You can find a lot of information about how to customize a service for you, uh, tips and other information to help you on your caregiver journey at phillips.lifeline.com. All right, well, Lisa, thank you so much for all this information. Thank you, my pleasure.